adjustable frame cultivator from Earth Tools. That's your width adjustment there. There are 10 different positions for width. This is your angle adjustment crank, which cranks the angle of the cultivator down or up. Adjustable gauge wheels. And of course, adjustable shanks, which are adjusted by loosening a nut under here, or a bolt rather, and then sliding the shank up and down. This will accommodate up to seven shanks. There are four shanks in it right now, two on each side. An extra shank can go here, and here, and here, in the center. The shanks are all hooked up to an indexing system so that when you crank the cultivator width in or out using this lever, the angle of the shanks is actually corrected, so there, no matter how wide the thing is, the shanks are always pointing forward. Uh, this keeps you from having to adjust them every time you make a width adjustment. And now we'll run it down the row a little. No crops planted here, this is just a test run. But as you can see, we've got this thing outfitted with four inch sweeps now, but they can be outfitted with any different size. We have sweep sizes ranging from two and a half, or actually two inch chisels, all the way up to nine inch wide sweeps. So you can do a whole range of cultivation uh, in terms of row spacing. To accommodate raised beds, if you want to straddle the raised bed, that's why these things, these uh, gauge wheels have such long posts on them so you can crank this frame up. That way your, your gauge wheels can actually be down in the pathways. This is wide enough to accommodate a 30 inch bed uh, and get the wheels outside the bed. Also the tractor could be outfitted with axle extensions as well to get the tractor wheels outside the bed so you don't have any wheels in the bed at all. Uh, we've also made the mounting platform. Let me cut this thing off. We've also made the mounting base here with a lot of different holes in it that you can mount the coupling to uh, going top to bottom. So again, if you're wanting to straddle a raised bed, uh, you would put this in one of the lower holes because your tractor would be lower. Uh, but that lets you accommodate a wide range. And if your raised beds are really high, we even have an extension plate that can be bolted at the bottom of this to bring it down even further. All right, we're going to talk a little more about the adjustable frame cultivator from Earth Tools. This is an implement made for our BCS and Grillo walk-behind tractors. Um, there's a few adjustments on this thing that uh, will make it easier to use and uh, more useful, of course. One, the first thing to understand is the angle adjustment here, this crank. When you crank this thing up and down, what it's doing is it's changing the angle at which the cultivator interfaces with the tractor. So it's a, easy, a little easier to adjust if I pull the handlebars down slightly to take the weight off the thing. But you can see, as I crank this, it's cranking the thing up like this. It's basically bending the thing in the middle, right with here at the, pit, as the axis point, pivot point. So that's changing the angle of those little cultivator sweeps at the, at the bottom. It's cranking them back like this. So you can change the angle of aggressivity, how much those things are kind of ramping down into the soil. This is also a handy way to jack them up out of the ground for transport. For example, if you've got your depth set with your gauge wheels and your uh, cultivator shanks, you know, at the right depth that you want to be able to cultivate at, say half an inch deep or something like this, and then you're done cultivating and you want to go back to the barn, of course you don't want to have to hold this thing up off the ground, that gets a little arduous. 
and you don't want to have to adjust everything, either your gauge wheels or your shanks. That's kind of a pain to have a wrench with you all the time. I mean, you'll need a wrench with you to do your initial adjustments to get things set where you want, but then when you're going back and forth to the field and things, you just want to be able to crank it up quickly. Well, as you can see, by cranking this angle back, it cranks those sweeps up off the ground about an inch. And if I crank this all the way down, it just brings them right down to the ground. So what you would typically do to get all the shanks set at the same depth, uh, say you want your gauge wheels to be on the ground, and of course you want your shanks to be, say, half an inch deep, and you, you figure out what angle you want them to be at based on this uh, to get the, the level of penetration you want. And then you just, you know, stick a couple like half inch thick boards under the tires. I don't, of course, do this on a flat surface. And then loosen up all your shanks and let them drop down to the ground. So they're actually on the ground. Carl just walked in front of the camera. Thank you, Carl, for making an appearance on Earth Tools TV. Uh, he doesn't get paid for that, but it's okay. He gets free room and board. So, um, so yeah, you just, you know, with, with the wheels jacked up a little, let your shanks all the way down to the ground, and then tighten the little bolts down here that hold the shanks in place, and then crank it. Uh, then, you know, to get those shanks up off the ground, with the, when the wheels are back down on the ground, you just crank it up like this and raise those shanks up for a transport position. So you can get out to the field. Now, of course, when you crank it down like this, your engine gets closer to the ground, but usually that's not a problem when you're just traveling. And then when you crank it back up like this, you get a little more engine clearance. So that's that adjustment. And of course, as I pointed out earlier, the, the quick coupling flange that it's attaching to the tractor uh, is adjustable in many different height positions here. There's a total of, looks like seven positions you can raise and lower this to, uh, depending on the height of your tractor wheels and um, whether you're straddling raised beds or not. Um, and of course, if you're straddling raised beds that are really tall, we have an extension plate that goes in the bottom of this that'll allow the tractor to be lower. Uh, of course, then you've got to watch out for ground clearance under the tractor, because if you're trying to straddle a raised bed that's six inches tall, and your tractor only has, seven, uh, say, seven or inches, maybe eight inches of ground clearance, well, you're only going to be able to straddle plants that are like one or two inches tall. So you just got to keep that in mind. Um, walk behind tractors are not as tall as four-wheel tractors. So I think that pretty much covers it. With all the pivot points on this thing, you know, there's a lot of pivoting parts that, that move in and out as the whole frame moves in and out. Uh, it's a good idea to keep a little lubricant on those from time to time. If they get rusty and nasty, they're not going to move so easily. Same thing with the screw crank here for the angle adjustment. You can lube it on a, both on the points where it passes through the pivot assembly here. Always keeps it in better shape and keeps the squeaks down. The, the bar assembly in the rear here with the gauge wheels on it could be taken off. There's two bolts holding it on. But typically you want pretty nice, you want some depth control, so the wheels provide that. But if you wanted to just lighten this thing up a little bit, you could drop this bar off and just have those skids on the ground, or the, your uh, sweeps on the ground, and that would be it. You just have to watch that it doesn't go too deep. The other thing is, this is a fairly heavy implement, especially with the gauge wheels attached. Uh, we've selected nice, big, fat, heavy, solid uh, rubber gauge wheels, so they are never going to fail, but they add a little weight to the back of it. So to, per to properly counterbalance this thing, we've actually got some of our Earth Tools manufactured suitcase weights on the front bumper of this VCS 749. Uh, because the length of this implement is, you know, pretty substantial as it extends back from the tractor, we only recommend the BCS 853, 852, BCS 749, and the Grillo G110 to run this cultivator because they have the longest handlebars, which will give you comfortable clearance uh, to be able to walk off to the side when you pivot the handlebars over to the right or left. In this section of the video, I'm going to show how to adjust the frame to achieve a little wider width. So right now, <clears throat> these bolts here are located in their rear hole. The front hole can be seen, if I crank this open, you can see this extra hole right here on either side. So in, the, in this position here, we can achieve the narrowest adjustment of this cultivator. Actually, in the first half of the video, I mentioned there were 10 adjustment positions. Well, there are actually 12. I miscounted. So right now, our shank-to-shank -shank measurement is about 18 inches. Uh, let's see, is that right? Uh, about 18 and a half. 18 and a half center to center. 
and so and those increments go out with each notch excuse me i'm wobbling the camera here with each notch we're gaining yeah it's about 19 and a half inches so it's about one inch overall width per notch that we bring this thing out um, so each time I move this out, eat the shanks are moving apart about a quarter inch. So crank this thing all the way out. It's various notch positions. Now we bring it all the way here. We've gone from 18 and a half. Let me get my tape measure spread out here again. I don't have a helper to run the camera today, so it's a little awkward. Right here. So we're at 32 inches center to center. 32 inches center to center on your out, outmost, outermost width. That's going to give us a shank to shank spacing of essentially 10 and a half inches. Yep, about 10 and a half inches. So if we want to bring it out a little wider, then we would remove this nut. Now, of course, I've already loosened this. Normally it would be a little tighter than that. It is a lock nut, so it doesn't have to be completely tight. You want it to be able to pivot. And we'll move this bracket up to the next set of holes. I have to do everything one-handed here because I'm holding the camera. I need one of those fancy little head things that goes in your head. But as of now, I haven't done that. Still doing it the old-fashioned way. So that spread out the frame a little wider on that side. Now I'm not going to bother doing that to the other side because we can, uh, we can extrapolate to get our full width here. So over here on this side, if we measure from this shank, this is the side that hasn't been expanded yet. If we measure from this shank to our center point, which is this uh, angle adjustment post right here, we get 14 and 3 quarter inches roughly, maybe 14 and a half. So let's put that over here, and we've got 17 inches. So we had 14 and a half, so we spread it out an extra two and a half inches on this side. And that gave us a total of, let's see, we can go outside, outside, 11 inches, center to center on the shanks. So extrapolating that out, if we spread out this side, move this bolt here into this other hole, we would have a total of 17, so that's 34 inches shank to shank. So there it is. That's how you do the final adjustment on there. Uh, of course, when it's spread all the way out like this in this hole, it won't collapse quite as narrow. So it depends on whether you want wider or narrower in terms of your spacing.